Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. You've all been asking for this one. We're back today to talk about ray tracing once again. This is of course because a new update for Battlefield 5 was made available yesterday, along with a new GPU driver from Nvidia that claimed to improve DirectX ray tracing or DXR performance by up to 50% in some situations. As you all know by now, ray tracing in Battlefield 5 was a bit of a disaster at launch. The implementation was plagued by technical issues, including poor reflection resolution, things being incorrectly reflected, and loads of noise. On top of this, enabling ray tracing on even the lowest settings cut the frame rate in half or even into a third, depending on the GPU and resolution at hand. This made the RTX 2080 Ti the only card suitable for ray tracing, and that was using the low setting at 1080p. The RTX 2080 was barely able to deliver 60 FPS, and the RTX 2070 was seriously not impressive in the performance it delivered. However, with this new combination of a game update and driver update, Nvidia is claiming that RTX 2080 Ti owners will be able to enjoy ray tracing at 1440p 60fps on Ultra, RTX 2080 owners should be able to do 1440p 60fps on Medium, and RTX 2070 owners are set for 1080p 60fps using Medium as well. Going on our past results, that would mean around the 50% improvement they are claiming, and of course we'll have performance numbers for you a little later. The big question is how did EA, DICE and Nvidia improve ray tracing performance and specifically did they downgrade visual quality to achieve this? Well Nvidia has a video up on their YouTube channel that explains some of the changes they've made, I'm not going to list all of them here, but some of the biggest ones include optimizing variable rate ray tracing, adjusting the denoiser, and fixing ray traced foliage. Variable rate ray tracing is the major change. This allows DICE to prioritize ray tracing on areas of the game world that will benefit the most from the effect, such as reflective or shiny surfaces. Essentially, the game increases the quality of ray tracing on these surfaces at the expense of lower quality effect in other areas. Considering many surfaces really don't need ray tracing at all, this has the potential to speed everything up. The foliage system was also a big performance hog with DICE saying a bug caused too many rays to be cast from foliage elements and that's now been fixed as well. So let's get into some quality comparisons to see if anything has changed starting with some of the areas we tested in the last video. When looking at the Ultra DXR setting in the previous version compared to the latest patch really there's no visual difference at all. It seems one of the areas DICE hasn't been able to improve is the quality of reflections on more matte surfaces like the gun. There's still a bit of pixelation to the effect there. The same can be said for comparing low in the latest patch to low when DXR was first released. There's no real difference. In this scene, there's also no significant difference in visual quality between low and medium or between high and ultra, though you can spot that the higher two settings produce ray trace reflections on more surfaces, just like last time. In this scene that features a large water puddle, again, there's not a large difference between all four DXR modes, and some of the issues with god rays being incorrectly reflected appears to still be present in this latest patch. However, there is a visual quality downgrade that I spotted in this area. This new patch has introduced some artifacting to the way ray tracing reflections are handled. Previously, everything that was supposed to be reflected was reflected. So you got these nice, clean, and for the most part, supremely accurate reflections that blew away screen space reflections for visual quality. However, with the latest patch, some screen space reflection-like artifacts have crept back into ray traced surfaces. If you look closely at the water surface, at times an object will move across the reflected area like an AI character or a falling leaf, and for a brief moment you'll spot the classic screen space reflection-like streak caused by that object obstructing the reflection's path. My guess here is that DICE have chosen to more aggressively cull rays from objects not in view, which has improved performance significantly, but it's at the cost of occasional artifacts where something that should still be in view is getting culled erroneously. It makes the reflections slightly more ugly, but it's still a significant upgrade on basic screen space reflections where this issue is much more widespread. The other change seems to be a widespread modification to the particle system, which makes leaves much less likely to float over or land on reflected surfaces. I wasn't 100% sure whether this has happened, but I've looked in a variety of scenes and noticed that while the same number of particles are visible in the air and on matte surfaces in general, leaves just don't obscure puddles of water as often as they used to, and this is the case where the DXR is on or off. I even spotted some leaves landing on puddles randomly, but then quickly disappearing. 
This change does affect how the game looks without ray tracing enabled, but I actually think it's a positive overall because particles cause lots of artifacts in screen space reflections as well. So toning down one area of that effect is good. And I'm not sure you would have noticed this if I didn't point it out anyway. As for noise, there is still a fair bit of noise to DXR reflections depending on the surface. In particular, it seems that DICE haven't been able to solve the extreme noise present on larger water surfaces. The rippling waves are just too much for the denoiser to handle and what you're left with is a ton of ugly noise. However, noise has been improved for clearer surfaces like windows. Gamers Nexus showed in their video this tram car window that had a ton of noise in its reflection when you move around. With the latest patch, you can still spot noise when moving about, but the denoiser is much faster to respond, so there's less noise ghosting in this image. In other areas, you might spot noise only for reflected trees, while static objects remain nice and sharp. Again, I suspect the issue with foliage noise is down to some of the changes they've made to improve performance with ray tracing foliage. In my previous video, I also found it hard to spot the difference between the four different DXR modes and came to the conclusion that there were really only two modes, but looking more closely, there does appear to be subtle differences between the four modes in terms of reflection resolution and draw distance. The higher the setting, the cleaner the reflections will look and the more draw distance you'll get. Very subtle changes though, which leaves medium looking almost identical to low for the most part, and similarly, high looks very close to ultra. Overall, I'd say the patch has for the most part resulted in no change to DXR quality, though some aspects are improved and some aspects are degraded depending on the area. Most of the work seems to have just been focused on making sure ray tracing isn't unnecessarily applied, and that's where the performance improvements have come from, though there are still some notable issues that need work like reflection noise. So let's talk performance. The first thing to note is that to get improved DXR performance, you need both the latest Battlefield 5 game patch and NVIDIA's new 417.22 driver. The driver alone seems to provide a 6 to 8% performance improvement to ray tracing with the pre patch version of the game. So NVIDIA definitely has done some driver side work to improve RTX performance. For this video, Steve has tested Battlefield 5 with driver 417.22 before and after the game patch, so we're only measuring the performance impact of the patch itself. But do note our before numbers for RTX on are about 6 to 8% higher than what we showed in our initial RTX video due to the new driver. The driver did not impact RTX off performance, which is identical or thereabouts to our first DXR video. Our testing this time around is much more comprehensive. We've tested the RTX 2080 Ti, the RTX 2080 and RTX 2070 at 1080p and 1440p on our Core i7 8700K test rig overclocked to 5 gigahertz. Post patch, We've tested all four DXR presets, so you can see how the performance differences stack up, though we'll be mostly focused on ultra and low. We've also tested two areas instead of just one. The first is the Tirelieu area, which we used in our initial video, which is a bit of a ray tracing stress test and showed the worst performance in the game. But we've also included performance in the Nordless area, which is a snowy map that has virtually no ray tracing and honestly looks very similar whether you have DXR on or off. First up, we're going to look at RTX 2080 Ti performance in the intensive Tyrell Year map at 1080p. The good news here first up is 1% low performance is improved for the Ultra DXR mode. It's now consistently sitting above 60 FPS. Post patch, we're also looking at a 57% improvement to average frame rates for the Ultra DXR mode and a 21% improvement for the low mode. However, despite a small reduction to frame rate for DXR off post patch, the mode is still 75% faster than Ultra DXR and 53% faster than Low DXR. Previously, this there was more than a 2x difference, but this performance penalty is still pretty brutal. At 1440p, it's a similar story, a 51% improvement to ultra performance and a 29% improvement to low performance. DXR off is more than twice as fast as ultra, while there's a 53% advantage over low. Unfortunately, the situation is worse in the Nordless map. Yes, there is a performance improvement at 1080p, but ultra is only 18% faster and low is just 5% faster comparing the pre and post patch performance. On top of this, DXR off is still 56% faster than DXR low. And in our test area, there is essentially no visual difference between these two modes due to the general lack of DXR effects in this area. The game still needs to cast rays though, even if it has no effect on the visuals, which causes this massive drop to performance. At 1440p, again, similar story, the performance improvement is slightly higher, 
but DXR off is still much faster. I guess the good news when looking at these RTX 2080 Ti results is that Nvidia's claims about performance are generally correct. You can play using the Ultra DXR mode at 1440p and expect 60fps. You could also get 90fps using DXR low at 1080p, but in both situations, Turning off DXR delivers well over 100 FPS, especially at 1080p, so ray tracing is still a huge performance hog. Time to look at the RTX 2080. Interior year at 1080p, the improvements for Ultra and Low were 64% and 30% respectively when compared to the pre-game patch. However, the game is still more than 50% faster with DXR disabled compared to DXR Low. At 1440p, Nvidia is correct in saying the RTX 2080 can deliver a 60fps experience using the medium DXR mode. Performance improvements are similar to what we've already been discussing, but again, Performance is more than 50% faster with DXR off. In the less intensive Nordless at 1080p, gains are modest like with the RTX 2080 Ti at below 20% for both the ultra and low modes. And once again, in what's a repeating theme here, performance is improved by more than 50% with the effect disabled compared to it enabled on the low mode. And it's a similar story at 1440p as well in this map. The RTX 2080 is a GPU we basically called useless for ray tracing last time because it couldn't even achieve 60fps at 1080p with the low DXR mode. Post patch in the Tyrell Year area, we're looking at gains of 79% using the Ultra mode compared to the pre patch version and 33% for the low mode. This now makes the low mode suitable for 1080p 60fps as Nvidia states. However, and yes you guessed it, performance is roughly 50% higher with DXR disabled compared to on the low mode. It's probably not worth talking about 1440p DXR with the RTX 2070 too much because the GPU struggles to reach 60fps with DXR on low, though this is a big improvement over what we saw previously. Performance here is around 42% higher with DXR disabled. And finally, we have the Nordless map at 1080p, we're seeing gains of 22% comparing the low mode before and after the patch, while Ultra gets a 25% boost. Again, there's essentially no visual difference between DXR low and DXR off, yet off delivers 44% more performance. Then we get to 1440p on the same map, and again, it's all a very similar story. So there's a lot to break down here. Firstly, Nvidia is, I guess, right on the money with their performance claims. A 50% uplift to performance is fairly typical between the pre and post patch versions of the game. And what they say is possible with their various RTX GPUs is indeed possible and in the more intensive areas of the game, no less. We're now in the situation where the RTX 2080 Ti can use DXR Ultra at 1440p, the RTX 2080 is suitable for DXR Low at 1440p or Ultra at 1080p, and the RTX 2070 is now able to handle 1080p with DXR Low. That's significant, especially for the RTX 2070, which was previously a bit hopeless. But there's a lot of caveats to those claims. You'll only see 50% performance gains comparing the Ultra mode before and after the patch. Gains are much lower comparing the low modes, more around the 30% mark. And these improvements are only in areas where there are lots of DXR reflection effects. In areas where there are no visible reflections, you'll only see modest performance gains of 25% or lower. And this is kind of where the problems continue to exist for ray tracing in Battlefield 5. In the Nordless area we tested, and other areas with few DXR effects, the patch doesn't improve performance all that much. And that's a big deal because we're still in a position where turning DXR off in these areas provides upwards of 50% more performance for practically identical visuals. Having this effect enabled in these areas is just wasting processing power, reducing frame rates from say 130 FPS down to 80 FPS for no quality improvement. Then in areas where you can see a visual improvement, the performance difference between DXR on and off is still enormous. In an absolute best case scenario, you're looking at 50% more performance from DXR off compared to DXR low. But if you want to use the high or ultra modes, that gap grows to over a 2x performance improvement depending on your GPU and resolution. Sure, we did see up to a 3x difference before this latest patch, but getting half the frame rate with DXR on is still a massive penalty to pay for what amounts to a small improvement to visuals.
In general, I still don't think Battlefield 5 is a suitable game for ray tracing. This is a fast paced shooter that you want to run at high frame rates. Why would someone with say an RTX 2070 choose to play at 1080p 60fps with DXR low compared to 1440p 80fps with DXR off? Why would an RTX 2080 Ti owner lock themselves into 1440p 60fps when you could run the game at 4K with higher frame rates than that or at 120 plus FPS at 1440p? It's really not a sensible choice for this sort of game. And to make matters worse, it's almost impossible to tell whether DXR is on or off when you're actually playing a multiplayer match. We've shown a lot of static comparisons in this video, nice you know, slow close-ups and that sort of thing, but the reality is when playing the game, you're not looking at the nice reflections, you're focused on enemies and objectives. Delivering 50% better DXR performance with this patch doesn't change the fact the effect only has a minor impact of visuals when you're playing, and by enabling the effect, you're missing out on plenty of performance that can have a significant impact on how the game is run. In fact, for the multiplayer modes, we not only recommend disabling DXR, but turning down a bunch of other quality settings as well for maximum performance. The question now becomes whether ray tracing will be worth it in other games, particularly single player titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider where you have more time to appreciate the visuals. While Nvidia and DICE have clearly worked hard to improve ray tracing performance in Battlefield 5, and we're no longer left with half to a third of the performance as a baseline, the performance hit is still going to be brutal in other games. If in the very best case scenarios you can increase your frame rate by 50% when disabling DXR reflections, I really hate to think what the performance hit will be when games integrate other DXR effects. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, for example, was set to use DXR lighting and shadows, which is only going to tank performance further. And what if a game doesn't use the optimizations DICE has achieved in Battlefield 5? Well, we could see more performance losses again, and this is without even considering the noise and other issues with ray tracing at the moment. I do genuinely hope Nvidia can continue to work on an optimized ray tracing to get more performance at no cost to visuals because at the moment the technology still isn't ready even after this patch. They've made significant steps towards improving how the intensive technology performs, but we're far from the point where we'd recommend to play games with it enabled, especially Battlefield 5. And really, it still can't be considered a key selling point for Nvidia's RTX cards. A luxury bonus, sure, but not something you should base a purchasing decision on. Uh, that's basically it for this revisit of Battlefield 5's DXR implementation with the latest patch. Again, both Steve and I spent a lot of time on this video to get it out as soon as possible, so we hope you appreciate it. Consider subscribing to get more coverage like this. Support us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat and monthly live streams, and I'll catch you in the next one.